Here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center, one of our goals is to promote sustainable and green agriculture. We are interested in a wide array of renewable energy along with other important characteristics that make egg and food production more environmentally sustainable. We focus on finding new ways that farmers may be able to achieve a lower carbon footprint while maintaining efficient production. Within our swine research program, we are addressing problems and challenges that face pork producers. One of the many challenges that producers face is satisfying an increasingly demanding consumer. Consumers and food retailers are pressuring egg producers to utilize more renewable sources of energy and to decrease the carbon footprint of animal agriculture. Farmers and their advisors are seeking ways to use more renewable energy sources in their production systems to meet these demands. As pig farmers, we know that heat stress in sows commonly occurs during the summer lactation periods and not only compromises welfare of sows, but can also compromise performance. It has been a progressive idea to cool sows in hopes that performance and welfare of sows could improve. Today, there are several existing methods of cooling sows, but in our project, we evaluate a new approach. Our thought is if we are able to cool the sows from the inside and the outside, we may be able to increase their performance along with improve their comfort and welfare. If we can achieve this cooling by using renewable electricity, we can also meet the consumer's goal of a more environmentally sustainable production system and satisfy the pig farmer's goal of keeping sows comfortable and productive during summer heat stress periods. Our experiment consisted of two treatments with all sows placed under an identical heat stress environment. The control group of sows was provided with a standard ventilation and drinking system with no other supplemental cooling provided. In a mirror image room, we initially set out to provide a cooling system for sows that consisted of a cool floor pad and chill drinking water, but then quickly realized the opportunity to warm the piglets as well. We added an additional feature of heating the piglets with the heat captured from sows. To implement this system that accomplishes both cooling the sows and heating the piglets, two closed water loops were installed. One loop circulated cool water under the sows, while the other loop circulated warm water under the piglets. The system also chilled water that was available in drinkers for sows 24 hours a day. The electrical power behind all of the equipment starts at the solar panels. These solar panels were installed for the purpose of this sow cooling system. Our goal is to reduce emissions from electricity generated with fossil fuels. These solar panels allow us to operate the sow cooling and piglet heating system with renewable energy. All green electricity that is produced at the research station stays on site. Any electricity created on site simply displaces electricity likely generated with fossil fuels that would normally be pulled from the grid. This solar system is comprised of a 20 kilowatt ground mounted solar array with panels that were made here in Minnesota. In the summer of 2017, the control room without cooling, represented by the blue line, used 35 kilowatt hours per day. The cooling system in the cool room, represented by the red line, used an additional 54 kilowatt hours in one day. Fortunately, this extra electricity used was covered by the solar production of 95 kilowatt hours per day, which is represented by the yellow shading. In the summer of 2018, we had a very similar relationship of electricity use and solar production, but the numbers varied slightly. Over the last two years in total, these solar panels for this project, pictured on the left, produced 56,140 kilowatt hours of electricity. Now that we have explained the solar energy, let us take a look at the actual heating and cooling system. The heat pump is at the center of the entire system. All of the water used for either the cooling or warming mats eventually makes its way through the heat pump to either be cooled or heated to the desired temperature. In the system, there is never a transfer of water from the cooling loop to the heating loop or vice versa. Instead, the focus is based on the transfer of the heat from one loop of the circulating water to the other. From the main holding areas, chilled water travels to the sow cooling pads that are located under the shoulder of the sow in the stall. This section is made of cast iron and neatly fits into the existing floor. The cool water snakes through the piping located under the pad. When the chilled water reaches the sows, the water is 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the water rises about 4 to 5 degrees due to the heat transfer from the sow through the floor surface to the water 
The warmed water then travels back to the heat pump where it is cooled through transfer of heat to the warm water loop that heats piglets. The chilled water for the drinkers goes through a very similar process as the cooling pad water. The drinking water is pulled from the research station's well, same as the other barns located on the farm. Any extra heat that is present in the well water is transferred by the heat pump to the warm water loop for heating piglets. The drinking water is constantly circulating to ensure the water never sits in the line, keeping it cool and fresh for sows at all times. The heating pass for the piglets is the final piece to the main system. The heat harvested from the sows is not enough to reach the desired 110 degrees Fahrenheit for the piglet heating loop. The heat pump extracts heat from the surrounding air to make up the difference. When the heated water makes its way through the piglet heating pads, the heat is transferred from the water through the mat to the piglets that lie on the surface of the mat which warms them. From there, the water travels back to the heat pump where it is reheated and is circulated back to the piglet heating mat. Throughout this process of losing and gaining heat, the temperature of the water leaving the heat pump is not always perfect and needs adjustment from time to time. The fan coil unit is important for maintaining the water at the desired temperatures. Warm and cool buffer tanks are also present within the water system to maintain a constant flow of water. The fan coil unit and buffer tanks are simple pieces of equipment within the system, but both play a vital role in maintaining consistent water temperature. The heat masks used in the trial were designed at the WCROC and were made by a local welding business. Commercial water heating pads were not used due to the unavailability of mats that would properly fit our farrowing stalls. Unfortunately, our mats were not as efficient or consistent in distributing heat through the mat as we had hoped. For instance, the temperature ranged on the mat from 95 degrees in the upper right corner to 82 degrees in the bottom left. After running the trials, here is what we found. The cooling system was able to successfully lower the temperature of the drinking water and stall floor. Temperature of the drinking water in the cool room, represented by the blue line, was consistently lower than the temperature in the uncooled room in three different farrowing groups. Temperature of the south floors in the cool room were also consistently lower than the floor temperatures of the uncooled room. These reductions of temperature combined contributed to the reduction of heat stress among the cooled sows. We reduced the heat stress by evidence of lower respiration rates among the cooled sows, taking 60 breaths per minute, while the uncooled sows took 90 breaths per minute. For some perspective, an average sow that is not heat stressed will take 30 breaths per minute. Reduction in rectal temperatures were also lower among the cooled sows. Although it was only a half a degree difference, it was still statistically significant and biologically important to show the sows were cooler in the cool room. These reductions in heat stress among the cooled sows translated into a two pound increased feed intake during lactation. This feed intake resulted in a benefit of less weight loss for sows in the cool room. However, this reduction in heat stress did not improve performance of litters. Litter size and litter weaning weight were not statistically significant in comparison between the cooled and uncooled sows. Without increased litter performance, there is no financial return to offset the investment of implementing the system on farms. Great value was still gained from this trial. We now know that sows are able to successfully be cooled in a commercial setting with a renewable energy system. In what we learned, there is now a greater foundation of information that can be used to push forward as an industry with new or similar ideas. The availability of having a production practical sow cooling system is one step closer for future swine farms. Funding for this project was provided by the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, as recommended by the Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources.